Uh-huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Man, got a radio show because God is in the blessing business. I just happen to be a recipient. I just happen to got a couple of things right. Um, And man, his grace and mercy carries you the rest of the way. All you got to do is get a couple of things right. And then his grace and his mercy will take over. His favor, his love of you. It's it's already evident. I mean, you know, because so many times we go along without even acknowledging him or conferring with him in our decisions. And, and we look up and we find ourselves in a predicament. And he always comes comes to the rescue. He always manages to show up. He's never too late. He's never one minute too late. And so uh, in light of this today, I wanted to talk to you about something. I, I, it's, it's another principle of success um, that I'd like to share with uh, everybody this morning. And once again, these are not things that you don't know or you've never heard before. These are just reminders along the way. And one of the things you have to be conscious of is don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. See, I I have a theory. Don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. You know, everything changes. Nothing remains the same. Nothing. And change is inevitable. Now, you can participate in the change or you can react to the change. Are you following me? You can participate in the change or you can react to the change. But don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. Now, what I mean by that is this. In participating in the change or reacting in the change, there is a difference. See, if you react to the change, that means the change has occurred and now you have to make the necessary adjustments to the change. Example, the boss walks in. You think your job is good. The boss walks in and hands you a pink slip. That right there, that's a change. Now, you didn't participate in this change because you didn't ask for the pink slip. But now you got to react to the pink slip. Whenever you have to react, to the change it's an adjustment period it almost throws you off so change is going to come it always does you can participate or you can react or let's say your boss comes in and hands you the pink slip and you said you know what I've been preparing for this day Always knew nothing lasts forever. I've been working on the sideline on the business idea I had. And I had, or I had several other applications in around town. I was just holding off to see what was going on. Go on. So when they hand you the pink slip, the transition, the adjustment you make is a lot more smooth transition because now you just transition into your new business idea that you've been working on. Are you transitioning into the apps you already had in or the contacts you made? the preparation for when the day they come in and hand you the pink slip. Well, Steve, what if they surprise you with it? This is just one example I'm giving you. So, you know, let's, let's not nitpick the message. So what I'm saying to everybody is don't be afraid to change because change is coming anyway. So many people are stuck in a rut because of your, our refusal to change. I was Hell bent on a certain thing going a certain way, and this is how it was going to go. Well, that that I was thinking didn't really fit. Now, in my own personal experience, this may not be yours, but in my own personal experience, the things that I've had the most trouble letting go of was something I wanted. When I lined myself up with the will of God to ask God what he wanted for me, you understand? those things came a lot more easy to me because it was in the will of God. It was what God wanted me to do too. Okay, see what you mean by that? Okay, here we go. When things were going wrong, 
in in relationships for me. What I did was the biggest mistake I've ever made was I attempted to fix what was wrong in my relationship outside of the relationship. Feel me? Okay. So I'm out there working my groove like I want to. Well, now guess what? There's a cause and effect for all of that too. Your house ain't going to get better. It can't. And then that leaves room for some other things. And so now when the change come, guess what? I got to react to it now. I got I to gotta, I gotta have a reaction to it. Had I lined myself up in the will of God, the transition may have gone differently. It could have still ended the relationship, but guess what? Some of the pain I was in, I ain't had to go through. I bought a lot on myself. Sometimes you're pursuing a passion of yours. And what God really wants you to do is pursue your gift. So now you're pursuing your passion, right? You're passionate about golf. You love golf so much, you just determined. But now you done messed around. You ain't made it on the PGA Tour yet. And you 45 still talking about, I'm going to play on the PGA Tour. Really? Okay. Maybe you ain't as good as this you think. Or maybe you're not as gifted as you think. Maybe you pursuing a passion. Sometimes, man, we have to change. And we have to ask God what is his will. His will is much simpler. It's a simpler road. Not going to be easier. It's simpler. See, when I wake up now, it's simple for me to wake up because I know there are a few things that I have to do. I have to click this mic on. I have to be positive. I have to be inspirational. I have to be informative. I have to be uplifting. Got it. That's what he want. All I got to do is sit down, close my eyes, ask God to help me be who he want me to be. And for the most part, he tell me what to say. Now, guess what he's done, though, to create this in me? I went through enough things in my life. I had enough challenges. I made plenty of mistakes. So I, now, at my age, I can turn around and tell somebody listening to me, okay, this is what I did. This is a mistake I made. Maybe you see yourself in this story right here. Maybe you don't have to go this way. Or this is what I've learned about becoming successful. Here's a principle that I learned. But then guess what? I had to be unsuccessful to get it, though, didn't I? So you can't have a testimony without a test. Change is coming. It's inevitable. You can participate or you can react. I much prefer to participate in the change. All right, let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is here, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Another great day. Filled with gratitude, which leads to the proper attitude. Thanking him allows you to be introduced to more blessings from him. It's a simple thing. The more you thank him for, the more he gives you to be thankful for. That's a principle of success. Please burn it in your mind and live your life accordingly. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show starring Shirley Strawberry, Carla Farrell, Keir Spates, Mississippi Monica, the legend Nephew Tommy, and ladies and gentlemen, that damn hmm. Jay <laughs> Anthony. Yes. Brown. Brown. <laughs> Junior, yes. what's on your mind? You know, Uncle, yesterday in closing, man, you said something that had me really thinking. And I'm just thinking about this, Uncle. You said that pressure really ain't crushing you. Mm-hmm. Because my mind, the pressure I be feeling, man, is like I got to get it. Or if I don't get it, I'm a failure. If I fail, man, there's a lot of people depending upon me. But I thought it was really interesting is how you look at pressure, that the pressure really ain't crushing you. Pressure is not designed to crush you. Thank pressure is designed to push something out of you that's buried on the inside of you that's going to be necessary for you to attain in order to get the things you've asked God for. That's what the pressure is for, to push something inside of you out so you can have it to use to get you to where you're asking God to take you. I'll give you an example. You're under pressure. 
to perform a certain way. You think this is what you're calling it, right? You're under yeah. pressure to develop. You're under pressure to produce, right? Right. Now, what that pressure is doing is it's making you dig down on the inside to discover the necessary tools, attributes, and characteristics that you possess on the inside that will allow you to attain, develop, mm-hmm. and produce the things you're asking for. Because every dream comes with a test. You can't have the dream and don't get the test. In order to get to something, you got to go through something. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing just right on the table in front of you. In order to get to it, you got to go through it. Mm-hmm. And so the tests are there to design you so that you can develop the things on the inside of you. That's what pressure is, Junior. Man. That's what pressure it's knowledge is. knowledge and wisdom, Junior. Mm-hmm. Like if you there me, I give you the same knowledge and wisdom. What, That's what? like when you... When you got to pee, that's a lot of pressure. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Wait, but you got what? to go. No, let him go ahead. How no, is that the ahead. example? That's just, well, that's just go getting up and going to the bathroom. That's the pressure doing well, that. That's a lot, but you got to go through something. <laughs> All I say is I'll office. be right back. Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> See, that analogy right there is the reason why. Uh-huh. See, that's the reason that why. That's the right. very thing right there that's stopping him. <laughs> All right, thank God. To look at the time. Uh, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, uh, the nephew will run that prank back right after this. I ain't the only one felt this pressure. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, it's time for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got? Uh, we gonna on the menu. We 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 down in the entree section. This is called uh, stupid right here. This is straight stupid. It's in the menu. Apartment 316. Apartment 316. I'm going to be at my all-time high of stupid, okay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Today's special. This is the special part of the menu. You don't have to set us up with your stupidity. You can just go ahead. (laughs) No need to forewarn us. taking us too long. (laughs) Wasted words. (laughs) <laughs> right. No. All right. No setup then. Three sixteen. A- apartment three sixteen. Cat dog, if you would. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Dale. Yeah, this is Dale. Hey, Dale. How you doing, man? My name is Vaughn, dude. Uh, you live in. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I got the right dude, man. You live in court, right? Apartments. Yeah, I live in. What's going on? Okay, you live in apartment uh three sixteen, right? Yeah. Is it something I need to be worried? About? What's going on with my apartment? Oh, no, no, no. Everything cool with your apartment, man. Uh, I got your number from a uh, lady at the uh, at the leasing office. Regarding? Say so, so what now? What's it, what's it in regards to? Well, actually, what's going to happen is I'm going to move to the court. And what I wanted to do, you know, uh, see, man, every apartment I've always had, I've always lived in apartment 316. And I know you in 316, so... They, you know, the girl at the office gave me, you know, because I don't want to move nowhere else where I can't be in room 316. I got to be, you know, it's just real superstitious, I know, but I kind of, hey, I got to hey, have hey, apartment. Hey, hold on. Uh, you say your name, Vaughn? Yeah, yeah, I'm Vaughn. Right, Vaughn. And who gave you my number again? Uh, one of the ladies at the leasing office when I was over there. Who was it? Uh, I can't really remember her name, man. Uh, look, look, hey, look. Hey, man, hey. Well, li- listen, cut this shit. Man, I'm going to tell you like this, man. Don't call me for nothing like that, man. Now I ain't moving out of my apartment, man. I've been staying up for four years. When I move out to the apartment, I move in the house. You understand? All this you got going with your, with your, with your whatever it is, your 316, your 132, that's on you, man. No, it ain't, it ain't 132. I got to stay in 316, man. See, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I done signed the lease, so I'm stuck with it. I got to get that apartment. So I'm, I'm going to try to tell you, would you like to, which, which other apartment would you like to move to? And I go on and get them to move your stuff. You oh, see what I'm saying? I ain't moving nothing. Ain't, ain't nothing moving. Only thing I ain't going to move is them numbers. You can add them up, divide them, do whatever you want to them, but I ain't moving. So you're going to have to get that to your head, man. And really, I'm because I don't know who the gave you. My number was like this. I'm at work and calling me with Cause I don't even know no Vaughn. No, nah, no, nah, you don't know me, dog. I, I asked them who was in 316. They told me. That ain't none of your business who in 316, man. Hey, listen, man. I'm trying to do this as respectful as possible. You know, like I said, I really can't function unless I'm living in a. 
appreciate disrespect me then. Do a disrespect for then. Because I'm going to show do this. If you call me with like this, I don't give a favor. No, I don't care if that was your favorite scripture. Okay, hey, you call me with like that, man. See, now you're going to make this hard. Okay, so let me let me tell you this to you. I already told a lady I want to be in 316. She told me I needed to deal with Dale. Now, I'm trying to deal with you in a polite way. Okay, because like I say, I can't function, man, unless I'm in apartment 316. I can't, I can't even get them go to work. I cannot function. Okay, I have to have that apartment number, dude. All right. So, it sounds like you got a problem on your hands, man. Whatever your problem is, that's your problem. Ain't got to do with me. Don't call me no like that. Like I say, I've been staying in 316. I'm gonna stay in 316 till I move to a house. You need to find something else to do. And really, I'm off at the. They gave you my number to call me with this. I can't believe that. Hey, 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 first of all, say this to you. Like I don't this, like man. the way you're talking to, you, talking to me. First, and I told you I, I don't got like the way you come at I'm me with that. Gonna... Come at me with a number. What the I look like you, man? 316. What? Hey, excuse me, dog? What you say? No, you calling me with this. I tell you what, man. Come at me or come at my apartment with that. And you gonna see it, man. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, man, I'm trying to handle this respectably, man. Okay? All right? That's what I'm trying to do. Dale, listen to me. I'm trying to tell you honestly, dog. I cannot function outside of them three numbers. I have to live in apartment 316. That ain't my business, man. No, I don't want to have to come move your, your s***, but I do it. Hold on. What's, oh, run that back. What you say? I said, I don't want to have to move I your s***. I do the s***. that down. That me what you you gonna come move my? I want. Hey, matter of fact, come yeah, come on, come move three sixteen, three sixteen. I got a for you. Come on, man. Come on, come move my, man. Come on, two ten solid. Come on, move your. All kind of going on in the world, but no. I got three hundred six five days. Deal with this. I'm at work. You want? I'm on my nine to five, and you come at me about three sixteen. I'm gonna whoop somebody. That's all I got to say, man. It's gonna be you. Before I, before I deal with you, though, I'm gonna get. At least now for even giving you my number all day. Hey, hey, man, I'm tr I'm just trying to tell you I have to stay under them numbers, man. I have to. I'm superstitious like that. I know I know everybody ain't like that, but I just happen to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't like that, man. I ain't got time to be dealing with yeah, Really, everybody ain't got time to even sit up and listen like this. Man, you look up a Christian. Man. Other than that, I've been out this job looking for what, what apartment number did they give you? They gave me like 329 or something like that. I don't, I can't stay there, man. Yeah, that's where I'm going to meet you at, man. Meet me at 329, 6 o'clock tonight. How about them numbers? Okay, okay. So how about these numbers right here? 877-29-STEVE. What that mean? 877-29-STEVE. 877-29-C. You ain't never heard that number before? Nah, what's in the, what the, I, it sounds familiar. That's the number to the Steve Harvey Morning Show, because this is nephew Tommy, and you just got pranked by your co-worker, Linda. I be Make that it's, 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 it's crazy as hell. I was believing this for a second. Had me rolling. <laughs> uh, got me about to take off and go to the lease now. I'll be calling right now. Who you say got me now? Yo, ain't you got a coworker named Linda? Linda? Ain't this about Linda? Coming for Linda right now. <laughs> I wonder why the hell she taking so long. She put she on some man. God, y'all had me going though, man. Hey, Dale, I got one more thing to ask you, man. Go ahead. Dale, you at work for real, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, what's the baddest radio show in the land, man? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> All right, man, get back to work, man. Your phone off the hook over there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Thank you, nephew. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so, Jay, uh, you've come up with a bit. Oh, this is so nice. You don't really like this at all. Whatever, dude. Jay, whatever. Go on, well, Jay. Whatever, oh, here, we go, here we go, here we go. Things that go. older women Oh, she women laughed her ass off laugh. at the men thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, let me I see what I fix these. Well, 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 okay, then. Well, we're about to find out. Let go, Jay. I thought it was Here hilarious. we go, Steve. Number one, stop walking around with stuff in your bra like your phone. Like change, <laughs> like your purse. You know where you got to dig down in it so we can What's see. What's wrong with that? Nobody want to see you digging in your cleavage <laughs> without us wanting your... something. You don't I'm tease us like over. that. <laughs> and then you got people like Monica sitting over here can't put nothing in her. She put no. her phone in there one time, man. She almost broke her teeth. She got so much stuff in there. Give her a 
water bottle. All right, <laughs> all right, here we go, here we go, Steve. Come on. Steve and Tommy, here we go. A crown raw bag is not a purse, okay? <laughs> it could it's be. Boy, it's it not could a be. purse. It depends on now, where you're Now, young boys Jay. do like to see them crown raw bags. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's sexy for some reason. Yeah, that purple but please and gold? stop doing it. That's yeah. the only thing about it. I don't know how you can object to that. But y'all, please. they not cues, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give us another one, Jim. All right. Okay, if you're going to wear capris, mm-hmm. no problem. You know those the pants that stop right at the calf right there, Steve? Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to wear them every day. LeBron James. And every please day. take <laughs> them damn strings off the bottom of them. I can't stand that Junior had on the pad the other day. <laughs> they never for tied it for men. some reason. Uh, for anybody, stop wearing them capris with them damn strings hanging. Them strings don't bother you. You don't think something on you. <laughs> you liked when LeBron wore shorts. Them so- wasn't. Them they didn't have strings on. <laughs> That was I just supported LeBron because I'm trying to get a championship in Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. I wouldn't be caught dead with a damn short set on. I'm telling you that right with now. With a string on it. Yeah, I don't give a string or nut. Give us another one, Jay. All right, here we go. Yeah. Here we go, Steve. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. A turban oh. is not coming back. It ain't coming back. You know, with the little diamond in the top? Tell that to me. That's Cannon. not coming back. That ain't back. coming back, and I'll tell you what else ain't <laughs> ever really in what? for black women. What? The big giant rose in the side of your head. Boy. You what ain't Niecy Nash. <laughs> well, she's black, though. But take that big rose out the side of your head. We see you. Yeah, you already that's pretty. Nice. Whatever. Like right. Where you get that big ass yeah. sunflower from? Yeah, on the side of your head. And they get like bigger every time I see it. Mm-hmm. Like a hat. <laughs> this segment sucks. Yeah, this yeah. segment. Yeah, we like yeah, yeah, keep going. Yeah, you bad. ain't got to wear a knee brace every damn day. <laughs> really? Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, there is some people that got head and knee brace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of them is top of, uh, uh, copper fit. So you don't need right. that because it press you down a little yeah. bit more. All right, here go one, okay. Steve. Tommy, here we go. Stop referring to younger men as sugar, uh-huh. honey, darling, baby. I'm out. <laughs> well, what are we supposed to call me? By His name. His name. His name. Because Shirley used sugar. She do. And darling, booger. I mean booger. Booger. Sugar. And precious. Sugar booger. And precious. Impressive. Precious, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. here we go. Here we right, go. What? These are things that older women need to stop doing to attract younger men. I got one. You got one, Steve? Yeah. All right, you do yours, and I'll do mine. Go ahead. Stop <laughs> wearing these halter tops <laughs> so tight that your back look like a can of biscuits. <laughs> Where somebody to put that spoon on that seam. Whatever. <laughs> Your little ass, your ba- your back look like a can of biscuits. Stop wearing them damn halters. They are not for you. Whatever. I ain't no what else. We can't even That's... see that. We can't even see the straps on the halter. You know what? They all bad. swallowed up. Your breasts all, all back there round by your back. I hate all of you. Men. If we can see your breasts from behind, show. you don't need a damn halter on. <sighs> okay, what else? What else you got? A lot of these young men, a lot of them, don't like these older type, you know, foods like hog maws, chitlins, <laughs> greens, <laughs> sweet potato pie, uh-huh. Man. potato salad. What's wrong with this? Candied yams. Candied yams. Like Why we got to come salad? over your house, eat, and go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Why we got to overload? <laughs> Damn, ain't you got nothing in here, Martin? You ain't found another recipe since slavery. Got the greens. Who the hell still puts a ham hock in they damn greens? They be using smoked turkey now. You just eat the, the bowl same. of giblet gravy damn. by itself. Carl said it's not what? the same. What's up same? with even time? Why am I so sleepy? Because you eating hog, ham hock juice yes. is in them greens. It's putting yes. you to sleep. I just saw what the hell. 
Now what the hell? I told <laughs> all my aunt wanted was the ham hock. She right. okay. Nothing okay. about the one. green. You got one. I got you got one. one. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is it? You Quit doing? walking around right. the house in your slip like oh. it's a dress. Nobody oh. wearing no slip anymore. Nobody wears slips no more. Last time I seen the slip was my mama. Yeah. Nobody wear no slip anymore. These are things older women can do. still out there, Shirley. Things older women can do to okay. attract younger men. Okay. What There's is- other colognes and perfumes out there besides uh-huh. white diamond. Yes. <laughs> soft scent and Avon, okay? Yes. Oh, There's yeah. others. Skin so soft, you mean. Skin so soft, right. Chanel number five. <laughs> <laughs> and one That's more Avon. evening in Paris. They make other things. <laughs> I don't know anyone. You all forgot Estee Lauder. There you go. Oh, you know, Estee Lauder. Oh, that was Ooh, that's that legendary that old was, ass friend. My, my mama, mama was white diamond and white. Boy, diamond. my mama, man, man, and let me tell you something. And my mama loved Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, yeah. My mama thought yeah. Elizabeth Taylor was the flyest chick on earth. She just never mentioned all them marriages. My mama was against that. She just never bought. I said, Mama, how many times she been married? Don't worry about that. Don't judge her. Just re- I just remember her and Richard. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Explain it, guys. What is it? Explain what you're doing. Well, it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. It's when somebody said something to you. Mm -hmm. You really didn't hear it, but you heard it. The only thing you can say is WTF. You kind of hear it, but you didn't hear it. You don't believe what you heard. You don't believe Yeah. Yeah, you don't believe what you heard. So, for instance, like this. Hey, man, your number hit yesterday, but I forgot to play it. (laughs) <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh man really <coughs> okay man that number hit okay. big yesterday dog but, man i forgot what? the plan <laughs> oh how about this one you go to the dentist and uh-huh. Jen says look i don't know how to tell you this but your teeth are fine but your gums got to come out okay <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> my gums you fight. <laughs> oh. oh God. WTF. All right, WTF. All right, you're at the doctor's office. Uh-huh. I mean, you're at the hospital. You're in the hospital. Okay. The doctor comes to you and he says, "I kind of got my charts mixed up. Oh. That's how you ended up with a breast transplant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry." Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm only human. Oh, I'm, God. I'm, I'm only human. <laughs> All right, let me jump in, Jay. Okay, what is what? this? What are we doing? WTF? This is WTF. Uh, WTF. <laughs> this is WTF. Hey, man, uh, you and Connie's uh, son, uh, how old is that boy? He 18 now? 18. Wow. Uh, hey, uh, let me tell you. That's my son. <laughs> what? Uh, what? I wanted what to tell the- you. That's my son. I, I, I and I know Connie ain't told you. You know, yeah. You're just gonna blurt right, it out one. like that. <laughs> I got one for you. Okay, come on. You and a friend get pulled over by the cops. You drive it. It's mm-hmm. your car. Mm-hmm. Woo! They pull you and say, "Hey man, just be real cool." But I put a kilo in your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> you did what, dog? What? Yeah. <laughs> Go. Oh, uh, Kilo, man. Go. Just be, just go, be cool, go, man. Just be, be cool. cool. Just be cool. Be cool. <laughs> Why no, bother no, no. telling him? Just be cool. <laughs> all right. Here you go, one. Oh all right, we're all here today to for the reading of the will, and it seems like your daddy had a lot of money. I mean, a lot. Uh huh. A lot of money, but he left it all to the cat. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> what the cat? <laughs> the the pig got no blankety blank cat. Man, blank that cat. WTF. WTF. Wow. Hey, listen, man. Uh, uh, let me. Let, 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 I know we can work this out. Listen, I'm the one that broke in your mama house. Okay. What? But listen, what? but me and you can split everything if you don't say. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what? Splitting my mama's stuff, man. <laughs> Are you crazy, man? I'm going to kill you. This show is ignorant. This show is okay. ignorant. Okay, but I got something to tell you, though. You <laughs> broke in the house. What? Uh-huh. You know, we tri- you tripping like that. Uh-huh. Guess what? Hey, man, I wasn't going to tell you this. 
What? what? Me and your mama kicking it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My <WTF>. mama dog? <laughs> Okay. Okay, I got one. I got one. Oh Lord. I, hey y'all, I had a bottle in the refrigerator. Now it had the word tea on it because it was an old tea bottle, but that was a urine specimen I was supposed to be taking oh, to the doctor. Okay. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I hate this show. <laughs> okay. It's, it's so stupid. WTF? <laughs> Uh, uh, hey, I know you um, You asked me to bring that weed over here. Um, I got scared. I just want you to know. Uh, I just went to the bathroom. I got it out for you. Oh. Listen. Oh. I, <laughs> you smoked it already? What? All of it, man. All of it. I'm high. <laughs> oh, hey, man. You and your roommate sitting up there. He tell you, man, look, I know you going to trip. Uh-huh. <laughs> they came over here, man, and cut the gas off the date, so I sold your car. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you finna get your ass. <laughs> what, <dog? laughs> they cut the gas off. <laughs> you sold my damn car. <laughs> what? Oh, man. <laughs> How stupid oh. are we? <laughs> Ignorant. Ignorant. So oh my God. Yeah. Amen. Ignorant. Hey man. <laughs> hey man. Come on, I what? need you to trip and get all crazy because I know how you are. Okay. <laughs> I, know, I know how you do. <laughs> but you know when you that scratch on the on the side of your car. Yeah. Well. It's, it's, it's got a dent right there now. Where'd you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that scratch you had on the side of your car? It's a dent there now. Oh, a dent. Oh. Okay. WTF. <laughs> hey, dog, I thought you said. I thought you said. Didn't you say that was your cousin? That's not your, that's not your cousin. What? Okay. Because, no, I was with her, but. So you saying that's your wife now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You got to make yeah. up your mind, man. You heard, okay. you heard Go ahead, Steve. You're the last one. <laughs> yes, yeah. close it out. Oh, hey, my man, uh, <laughs> the police came over here to talk to me today. I ain't, I ain't know what else to say, man. I just told them to call you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go crazy, guys. I was in the end, but I just had to call you. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Have you guys ever worked with someone? We all work together, yep. so listen to this. Have you ever worked with someone yeah. and found out that he or she uh, was making more money than you? <laughs> Somebody every day, they make more money than you. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Is that a question, really? Yeah. <laughs> all right, if so, you know there's no worse feeling. are we feeling. talking about? <laughs> I have no idea why this is coming. You immediately want to rush into your boss's office, huh? He just so happens to be the boss and ask for a comparable raise. Now, this is according to an article in a womenshealth.com uh, 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 on their website. You should first research why your coworker makes more money mm-hmm. and see if your pay is below market rate. Then go in and negotiate with your boss by pulling together your accomplishments since being on the staff. That is it. Okay. That's how you get a raise, okay, yeah. if you find out someone's making more than Okay, you. that's good advice. Yeah. yeah. Do that, not really- say you got it. That is not a that's not a good phrase to use when you want to raise. Oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to your boss. To the, when you talk to, to your boss. boss. Uh-huh. Gotcha, Jay. Meaning yeah. that. Okay. I wonder what, what, why do you need a raise? Because you got it. You got it. it. <laughs> no, you're right, Jay. Okay. Okay. Don't point out stuff they are buying for themselves if you want to raise. I see you coming here with a new suit every day. How come? <laughs> what I need to know is how come. That's not a good point. Don't don't okay. go there. Look at the car you drive. Look at the car you drive. And I'm on the bus. Don't don't go there with that.
Uh, <laughs> bring out your accomplishments. What do you bring to this company as That's to why nice. you want more money? That's, That's okay. right. When I, when okay. I found out how much yeah. more Steve was making than me, that upset me. <laughs> so what did you do okay. about it? Yeah. Did, I did you, you go ask Steve for a raise? Who am I complaining to? Him? Who am I complaining yeah. to? Yeah, did you go ask Steve for a raise? <laughs> that didn't last long, did it? That didn't last long. <laughs> Tell me. Steve, as yes, CEO, sir. though. I have been at this a lot longer than you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I've been in this business longer than you. <sighs> I've had more failures than you. You so therefore, Tom. You finna talk about Papa Ray? Is that what you finna <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about John. He wasn't going there. I wasn't even there. about that right there. He wasn't. <laughs> Papa but Ray since you brought it a up. fine piece of theater. Right. Right. Since you brought it up. Back to the John Day. Back to the raises. Come on. Yeah. I want to talk about Papa I, Ray. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I just... I just been out here longer than you, dog. But you got yeah. like two or three more zeros than me, though. I mean, it's a it's an extreme amount. <laughs> two or three. <laughs> you got some zeros. Well, you know no, what? I, I look at no, it this no, way. No, no, Tommy. But... Excuse me. Hold on one second. Mm-hmm. No, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, you got you four. To, no, what you're referring to is commas. <laughs> <laughs> well, commas, oh, the commas. That's what I mean. That's yeah. what I was the laughing commas at. commas are powerful. You, yeah. the you worry about the zeros. zeros. Yeah. Tommy, don't worry about them zeros. <laughs> <laughs> just them commas. You got to get them commas. I, I, just them damn I, commas, boy. That's, man. that's yeah. where your money is. Your money ain't in them zeros. Your money's in them commas. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Steve and Tommy, you two are like the grilling experts on the show, the barbecue experts on the show. Uh, So Mm -hmm. Memorial Day is coming up, and uh, I wanted to know if you guys had any tips for us. Tips for grilling. For grilling. Let me go. Let me go first. (laughs) He's been cooking long now, Cap. Let me go first. This is what bothers me about people grilling. Okay. Quit putting all that lighter fluid on your charcoal or your (laughs) wood. Jesus. That just drives me crazy. Jesus, right. do, you, do you realize your meat smells just like that wow. lighter fluid? It tastes like that. Oh, so, yeah. Come on, man. Get you some wood. They got some natural wood starters that you can put in there and light those up. And now your wood or your charcoal, whichever one you're using, doesn't taste like or smell like all this gas lighter fluid you didn't put on there. That's that's one of my tips right there. That's a pet peeve of mine. So, oh, okay. so let me just piggyback <laughs> off that okay, and on. say to start your fire, they sell they sell what Tommy's talking about is fire starters. Wood mm-hmm. starters, Weber little white chunks. They got match sticks that burn naturally that you could put on them. Mm-hmm. But they have these yeah. things that look like coffee cans. Mm-hmm. They look like a big giant coffee mug. You put your charcoal in it and light it from the bottom. Right. And that can get your charcoal started a little bit more even for you. You, you don't pour the charcoal in the basin of your thing. You pour the charcoal in this like big round pot and yeah, it's start got a it on. like that. Yeah, it's got a handle on it. Then you just pour it in there and they'll burn even. This is little stuff you can learn. I have okay. another tip when it's my turn. Okay. okay. Wow. Here's another one. People that people that are, you know, amateurs at grilling. They throw their chicken on and then you think 20 minutes later your chicken is done. Yo, chicken ain't done. Okay. In 20 minutes, it's not 20 minutes. Yeah. No, no, it's not. Well, how come it, it takes so done. long? Dang. Surely, I mean, grilling is a sport. Oh, yeah. oh, is it? And why are yeah, you talking while we talking Stop. about cooking? Jesus. Why are you eating? Holly wrote this oh, for trying us. To, <laughs> trying to stay awake is Why it takes so long? Well, learn how to cook. Because wow. I'm trying to stay <laughs> awake. You could be That's awake. Hell, the people would come over your house and not leave so much if you could cook. <laughs> You'd have Whatever, company. bring something. <laughs> so listen, while you're cooking your chicken, keep flipping it, and it, don't be afraid to slice a piece and see where you are. If you see a little light red water, you need to cook a little longer. That means there's still some blood in there. Keep oh, cooking blood. your chicken. Keep flipping it and keep cooking. That's all I'm asking. Look, man, grilling ain't no thing where you can leave your meat for 10 minutes and walk off somewhere. That ain't what this <laughs> is. There's it's some people going in the house for 30 minutes. What did you no, do? Yeah. You, you, you can't do that when you grill it. Grilling is a sport. It's an activity. Yes. You got to move that chicken to the front, to the back. Go ahead. Okay, okay, um, let's go back. Real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Can I have one, Jay? Okay. I don't know nothing about grilling. I think what you guys are saying is great. What is we? If you're at a barbecue 
please bring good ass plates, okay? <laughs> if the sign says cheap plates, if it says cheap plates, damn it, don't bring them, okay? It says cheap plates right there. Bring uh, good ass plates. All right, Jay. All right, all right. All right. I can do that. Here's, here's one quick one. I give it back, Duncan Steve. When you when you he said uh, uh, your charcoals, how you even them out. Um, you know when you get it when you get it going. But some of us like to have a real hot side and then a warm side while you cook it. You understand? So you may have more wood or more charcoals on one side and then on another side you got you still got wood and charcoals, but it's not as heavy as the other side. That's just one of my tips. Yeah, my oh, okay. tip is I have the back side of my grill. I put no charcoal back there. There you go. On the back side, I put none. Okay. So you can move some meat off that heat if it's cooking too fast. The coolest spot. Those are you gotta have what Tommy's talking about a cool spot on the grill. Mm. I put no charcoal on the back on the back fourth of the grill. I put no charcoal. This was so exciting. And, and um, you can thank set you the money on. You can set the meat on top of each piece if you have to All right. to keep it off the flame. And Shirley, don't rush us with your non-cooking <laughs> ass. There's <laughs> people who care about this. This is fascinating. But the first one in line on the... for a plate, though. <laughs> right. Yes. And ain't nobody coming right. to your house eating out we... no damn crock pot on my mouth. We morning. gotta go. Coming up next, the nephew with today's prank phone call. <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, about four minutes after t- after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, my ex-wife ran off my fiancé. My ex-wife ran my fiancé off, okay? Wow. Yeah, wait till you hear this letter, Tried guys. That, uh, that almost happened to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is every outside letter voice, outside voice? But why is every letter always about him? Yeah. I'd have had a hell of a life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of these letters. <laughs> right now, it's your nephew's turn, Uncle Steve. He's here with today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? I want to date your mom. <laughs> well, do you, man? Run it. Boo. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach. Uh, I'm trying to reach Miss Burns. This is James. This is her son. Uh, how, how you doing, man? My name is Gordon. Gordon. I just recently joined the church, man, within the last month, and I was trying to get in touch with, with Miss Burns. Uh, one of the members gave me a number, but I guess they, they must have gave me the wrong number, I guess. Is, is this a home number, or what? what is this? Oh, hold up, hold up. Who, 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 who is this again? My name is Gordon. Gordon, I'm, I'm, I'm a new member at the church. Yeah. Uh, uh, is this your number? Yeah, man, this is my phone number. I'm James. I'm her son. Oh, that's your mom. Okay, that's your mother. Right. All right. Well, yeah, my bad, man. I was trying to get in touch with Miss Burns. Now, is, do you have a um a cell or a home number or something where I can get in touch with Miss Burns? Wait, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me. You, you, your name is what? Gordon, Gordon. Gordon. Right. I just joined the church, man, so I might not have met you yet, James. Okay, well, God bless you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Is, is there any way I can get your mom's uh, home number from you? Uh, I mean, you, you just joined the church. I mean, I don't... I don't see why you wouldn't be able to talk to her. I mean, is there anything, is there a message I can pass on to her, though? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if it's all right for uh, for me to take her out. I, I've been seeing her for the last... Hold up, 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 hold up. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me now, you, you were just saying that you were a new member to the church, and somebody gave you, or they were attempting to give you my mother's number, and you're asking me if you could take her out, man? Well, I wasn't asking you. I thought I had her phone number. I guess they gave me your number by mistake. Uh, you know, that's my reason for calling. I thought I was going to get her. I want to take her out, you know, maybe to dinner or something. Uh, well, I'll be quite honest, man. I just came back home from overseas from fighting and everything, man. And, uh, I mean, you know, my pops just passed away not too long ago. And I ain't, you know, I ain't too keen on my mama going out with somebody. And besides, you, you don't even sound like you her age. She in her 60s, man. How old are you, man? I'm 36. Get the hell out of here. You How old, man? I'm 36. I'm 34. What the f- is you doing? You, you do realize my mom is pushing 60, right? Well, you know what, man? I, I look at it like uh, James, right? James, I look at it like, it's, you know, age ain't nothing but a number, man. It, it, it's what's in your heart, man, and how you carry yourself, you know? Yeah, but so my mom, hey, 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 but my mom ain't no cougar like that, and I know she ain't coming after you. All right, now, I remember her telling me that she tried some new things at this church, but going out with some that's 30, 30 
How do you? You, you a baby, man? Sir, I'm, like, like, I'm thirty. I'm thirty six, dude. Man, you you like my brother or something, man? Ain't nowhere in the world my mama gonna be well, dating. Well, okay, 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 James, James. Uh, let me say this, man. First of all, I didn't even know I was calling you. Second of all, I'm calling to speak with her. I'm not calling trying to get permission from you. Miss Burns is a grown woman. Miss Burns can decide. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Talking about, I don't think you heard me, man. I just came back from fighting overseas. My pops passed away not too long ago. I am the man of the house. Let's get that straight right now. All right. I don't care if I'm still living at home or not. I'm the man of this house, all right? You calling to ask my mama on a date? Okay. Yeah, you might as well just stick to church, dog, because, you know, as I said, be blessed. But it ain't going to be no blessing from me to you. I tell you that right now. Okay, I'm not looking for a blessing from you at all, brother. You might now, want now to I look got, for I, a blessing. I respect, the fact, but I respect the fact that you've been overseas and you've been fighting for this country, okay? But if I decide I want to... Uh, speak to Miss Burns about going out. I think Miss Burns has every right to decide if she would like to go out with Gordon or not. And Gordon wants to take her out. I Hold the up. Hold the up. Look, bro, I don't care how old you say you are, all right? Number one, you're too young, as I already mentioned, all right? This ain't going down with you and my mom. Okay. I'm th- Straight up. Hey, man, that's for your mama to decide. No, no, no. no. You, you bringing up my mama, you letting the word your mama come out your mouth again, that's going to get you up, all right? I don't know where you from. I don't give a how old you are. I'm 36, man. I know what church my mama go to, and, and it ain't going to be her and you. You ain't going to be asking her out, all right? I don't give a what it takes. I will show up on Sunday, catch your in the pulpit or wherever you're going to be sitting, in the back, in the choir. It don't matter. Something is going down. You are not going to get with my mama like that. You got that? That's up for your mama to decide. If your mama want to go out with me to have dinner, ain't nothing wrong I'm with that, man. I'm, 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 I'm deciding it right now. It ain't going to happen. I told you before, be blessed or get your whooped. You got two choices, all right? I didn't fight overseas hey, hey. three years to come back and also deal with my daddy dying and then come back. Man, I'm suffering from PSD, dog. I don't know what the I'm going to do unless you want to get you, it like you, that. You suffer from what? A PSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and I will release all that on you. You got that? Uh, I don't play that. Hey, hey, man, listen, I don't want no trouble. It don't matter to me. You can catch it. Okay, look, man, listen, I ain't trying to have no trouble out you, man. All I'm finna say is this right here. I'm a, I'm a, I'll am I'm talk to your mom on Sunday, okay? You ain't gonna talk to me. Are you not hearing me, man? I'm, uh, okay. I'm going crazy right now. Okay, can I say this? Can I say one more thing to you, man? Before you explode. You ain't got nothing else to say. I got one more thing before you explode, man. Is you listening? Yeah, man. James? What? Hey, man, I want to tell you this, man. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your mama <laughs> got me to prank phone call you. Get the f*** out of here. Is this who? Hey, man, this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Your mama told me, she said, my son been overseas, he's been fighting. I'm glad to have him home. She said, we got to get him <laughs> back in the spirit of laughing. Man, my mama, <laughs> are you are you kidding me, man? We got you good. Man, we listen to this show overseas, man. <laughs> uh, first of all, I got to say thank you for fighting for this country. I want to ask you one more thing. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, nothing but the Steve Harvey morning show. Get it overseas and in the States, dog. Thanks, man. (laughs) (laughs) Did I go through Paul's shirt? You you know you did. Yes, you played too much. You already know. Mamas need love, too, though, don't they? Of course. We're both mothers. I wish you would talk about dating man. (laughs) (laughs) I might call you next week. <laughs> I might call you next week. <laughs> see, that's just, see, that's you too far. But you go too far a lot. That's you. Well, right there you at know. that edge. But he right usually goes to the edge. He, he steps over it. Sometimes yeah. you. You think I'm up a boy? Yes. No, nah, nah, perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> My God, you're terrific. Is this reverse psychology? Steve? Y'all ain't, y'all no, it don't matter. Don't, psychology don't work with him. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, nephew. Coming up next, the strawberry letter <laughs> subject. My ex-wife ran my fiance off. Wait till you guys hear this unbelievable letter. 
My ex-wife ran my fiance off. Now, Steve said this has happened to him because he's had no, a heck tried. of a life. <laughs> I tried. Damn near. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now, guys, for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need some advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your letter to Steve Harvey FM, okay? And click Submit Strawberry Letter. We will make sure we try to read your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one today. And this one is a doozy. (laughs) Okay, it's a doozy. Here we go. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject, my ex-wife ran my fiancé off. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am in a desperate need of advice. I'm here for you. (laughs) I was engaged to be married, but my fiancé and I recently split up after my ex-wife caused a whole lot of problems in our relationship. What? (laughs) When When my ex heard I was engaged, she called me. I told her that I was extremely happy and excited to get remarried. My ex said that she was happy for me and wished me met, wished me well, which was a big lie. Oh, this ain't about me. <laughs> a few yeah, days. Yeah, this is mine. Mine ain't never said nothing. <laughs> a few days after we talked. They never wished me well. Well, listen. Again, listen. Keep listening. Keep listening. Hell no. This is not me. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Shit. Keep listening, Shut Steve. Up. Yeah. I'm trying to go ahead. So ignorant, right? My ex said she was happy for me and wished me well. <laughs> what? Well, it was a big, he said it was a big lie. A few days after we talked. Shirley. Huh? This this must be Will Smith. Go ahead. <laughs> Why you say that? Because they have that great relationship. All them people be sitting together talking and stuff. I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I want that one. <laughs> All right, here we go. A few days after we talked, my ex created a new Facebook page, named it The Thompsons, and posted a bunch of old pictures from our wedding and family vacations. My fiance's mother saw the Facebook page and showed it to my fiance. And that's when everything hit the fan. I told my fiancé that, yes, I talked to my ex because she called me. I didn't call her. I told my fiancé that I had no idea that the Facebook page existed because I don't deal with my ex-wife at all. My fiancé didn't believe me, so she called my ex, and my ex gave her an earful of lies. She told my fiancé that I still try to see her and that we are still in love with each other and talk often. Of course, my fiancé was all confused and didn't know who to believe, so she called off the wedding and we broke up. My ex found out about her breakup and claimed she felt awful about it, so she sent my fiancé an email admitting that she lied about everything and she was sorry that she interfered. My fiancé still doesn't want to marry me, and we barely talk at all now. Even though my ex admitted she was lying, I'm still suffering from what she did. Can you please offer some advice on how I can get my lady back? I I cannot stand my ex-wife for this, but I'm going to let God deal with her. I just want my fiancé back. Please help. Yeah. Man, I feel you, Slayer. That's yeah, this is this is this is funky, funky, funky right here. I I, I don't I, I don't like your ex-wife. I'm just gonna put that out there. Don't like her at all. She's a stuff starter. She's mm. a very negative person. She doesn't mm. care who she hurts. Stuff. Mm. Ha, ha, yeah. Stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> she she doesn't care how many lives she destroys, how many lies uh, she tells. She doesn't care. She's cagey. She's tricky. She, all of that. Uh, it's just so wrong uh, on so many levels what she did. And you're right. You're right. I'm gonna go with you when you say you're gonna let God deal with her because it's not. It's not. It's not, <laughs> it's not really about her. It's not really about her. Uh, he never do what I want him to do. It, it, it's just never about. It's not about your ex. This is about your most recent ex, your ex fiance, because there was a problem in your relationship. There had to be some kind of problem on her part that you didn't know about in your relationship, a trust issue. How can she let this ex just come out of nowhere, do all this stuff, make her doubt you? Okay, and, and and do all these things, 
and, and believe this woman over you. And you guys are, are, are making wedding plans here. Okay. Uh, yeah, she can be confused, but to just throw it all away over what she said, especially, the woman gave her an email and said she was lying, but she doesn't know what to believe. I don't know if you're going to ever get this woman back. I, I, I really don't because the trust is broken on her part. She doesn't trust you because your ex ex did so much damage. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure you've done everything a man could do to prove to her that this is not true. You told her you didn't talk to her. You don't call her. You told her that. You told her the ex called you. You told her all that. She wasn't buying any of it. I guess there was too much evidence that she saw with, with the Facebook page and the pictures and all of that. The problem, I think, is with your most recent ex-fiance, <clears throat> excuse me, and not trusting you and not wa- not knowing what to believe and not wanting to go farther in, in this relationship. Steve? Shirley, mm-hmm. I agree with you 100%. I think you've hit it spot on. Yeah, He in trouble. Well, good. Yeah, he is. Yeah, cause... yeah he washed up. He, he on the banks. He a fish that then got washed up on shore and it's low tide. He just sitting in the sun. Just cooking. flapping. He need this water back in desperately. Because he died. Yeah. He loved his girl. Shirley is really spot on. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. Uh, You all have had trust issues before. This was the one thing she couldn't take. But in the words of Marvin Gaye's song to his ex-wife Janet, you were my wife, my flower, my hopes, my dreams. Mm -hmm. And for you to understand what this means, I shall explain. I withstood all your jealousies, yes, and your mm, too. But I'd forget it all once in bed with you. But, oh, darling, how could we end up like this? All right, Marvin. Mm -hmm. Is that here, my dear? Uh Mm -hmm. Let me. Uh Okay. (laughs) All right, as Steve sings us out of this this letter right here, we'll be back with his... Second response uh, at 23 after the hour. Subject, my ex ran off uh, my fiance. We'll be right back. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, uh, please, let's recap today's strawberry letter and get to your response. Subject, my ex-wife ran my fiance off. This dude's ex-wife found out that he was engaged, called him and told me that she was happy and excited for me. He said, which was a big laugh. A few days after we talked, his ex-wife created a brand new Facebook page and called it the Thompsons mm-hmm. and posted a bunch of old pics of their wedding and family vacation. Ooh, that's terrible. Then this dude's fiance's mama saw the Facebook page, showed it to my fiance, his damn mama. Her, see her damn mama in it. <laughs> this why you can't get your girl back, man, because she under the scrutiny of her mama. Look mm-hmm. at this. On Facebook, Sister Claire Reese see this. Earlene done seen it. I can't go nowhere. Everybody done seen this here. This man embarrassing you like that. And now your friends done found out about it because you took it to your friends. And your friends have been commenting on it. Girl, this is new. When everything hit the fan, I told my fiance that, yes, I talked to my ex because she called me. I didn't call her. I told my fiance I had no idea that the Facebook page existed because I don't deal with my ex at all. Your fiance didn't believe you, man, so she called my ex. She called your ex, and your ex gave her an ear full of lies. Oh, man, see, hit this why you dog that, man. Hell have no fury like a woman scorned. Now, That's listen right. to me. I thought hell have no fury like a woman scorned. I really thought for years until Shirley told me last year that that's not a scripture. And then I wanted to have a a meeting with all the old theologians and all of them to see if we could get it put in. (laughs) You can't put nothing in the Bible, boy. You cannot add to it. It says that in the Bible you cannot add to it. I know that, but I just think if if something ought to be in there, I don't know why that ain't in there. And so they told me I couldn't do that, so I got off of that. So so she told your ex-wife, said that y'all still in love, that you try to see her. See, here's the key. Still try to see her. If the girl had something on you seeing her, she wouldn't have said you still try to see her. She'd have said, I got texts, I got pictures, because you got to text, somebody got a picture. You got to have phone records. 
They don't have that on you, dog. She lied and said, I still try to see her and that we still in love with each other and we talk often. Where the phone records? Of course, my fiance was all confused and didn't know who to believe, so she called off the wedding and we broke up. She mm. broke up because of that phone call and her damn mama no. Wait, what? Her damn mama. <laughs> you mad her at mama. Mammy all over. <laughs> mammy. <laughs> She oh, go from she mama to mammy. Go. Now, you over there trying to explain that she's standing behind her daughter with her arm folded. Mm-hmm. With her lips perched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She been trying to protect her baby. Mm-hmm. She trying to protect her daughter. Of course, my fiance and co- my ex found out about our breakup and claimed she felt awful about it. So she sent my fiance an email admitting that she lied about everything and she was sorry that she interfered. My fiance still don't want to marry me, and we barely talk at all. Now. Oh, See, that's crazy, man. Yeah, she that's that and even though my ex admitted she was lying, I'm still suffering from what she did. Mm. Can you please offer some advice so I can get my lady back? I cannot stand my ex-wife for this, but I'm going to let God deal with her. I just want my fiance back. All right, dog, here you go. First of all, I want you to take this notion to her. If she said tried to see her what's prevented her from seeing her if she say y'all still in love with each other your ex would see you but she didn't also man phone records exist pull up your phone records man and show you ain't had no conversations with this woman so wait Nothing extensive so excuse me steve you're saying he needs proof to show if he has a uh, physical he evidence Mm, okay. Hey, we trying to get your girl back. Okay. okay. She going to love the fact that you worked this hard to research. Mm, okay. See, a 30-second phone call, you can't arrange nothing in 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. That's, hey, what you doing? Hey, look, I ain't got time. I want to talk to you. Click. Mm-hmm. See, a lot of times yeah. they call there. and you play yeah. it off. Mm-hmm. You understand? So you got to get your phone record. And then where the text messages? And you can't arrange nothing no more on the low low without texting. You can't do it, dog. Mm-hmm. So get your get your records and get to Texas. Now, once you do that, you got to present your case. Hey, man, you got to you you got you got to get on your stomach. And crawl. Even though you didn't do nothing wrong, you want your girl back. Now, here's what young dudes don't like to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know how old you are, but Dang. you got some kind of sense because you said I'm gonna let God deal with that. Mm-hmm. So you got some kind of sense. Mm-hmm. You got to get to your girl. And you gotta refresh her memory. Of what you you gotta Michael hand. Jackson her. You gotta remember <gasps> the time we fell in love. Remember the time when we first met, girl. You got to get to Michael Jackson, this girl, with some remember. On the phone, <laughs> on the beach, F dog, you and me, what about, what about, what that, what yeah, that yeah, roll that tongue. <laughs> You got to get down. All right, guys, we got to get out of here. You can email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it is time for Comedy Roulette. And uh, Jay, explain it to us, please. It's so simple. Comedy Roulette, this is where we take five subjects. We put the subjects on the wheel. We spun the wheel around and around and around. Where the wheel stops, we'll do the damn thing. What are the subjects? You ready? Here we go. Number one. I apologize, baby. This is the first time this has ever happened. I hope it don't stop there. Number (laughs) number two. Well, when is the baby going to sleep? (laughs) Man, that is me. (laughs) Number three. How long is he going to stay in the sixth grade? (laughs) Once again. (laughs) Number four. uh, Well, you're big and bad. Come on down here. Okay. I heard that one. Yeah, Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Number five, I didn't get fired. They just tripping at the job. I like okay, that. I didn't get fired. <laughs> they tripping. Yeah. Okay, and here's a bonus number uh-huh, six. Uh-huh. Uh, if you buy cheap stuff, it, it, it doesn't last. All right. Okay. All right. All right. It's been a day. You bad. Bring me that bag. That's the one you want. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. Oh, 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 Jay, you did not want number one. Oh, what is it? I apologize, baby. This is the first time this has ever happened. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. You, oh, you, you oh, didn't yeah. want that one. No, I didn't want that one. You know the problem is? It's you. You is the problem. I can't concentrate because of you. 
<laughs> you doing something to me. Yeah. Make me lose my concentration. And whatever it is, stop it. <laughs> you need to focus. <laughs> yeah, that, one, that one was personal. That was, yeah. That was like, yeah. That's why I didn't want it to stop on me. Man. Okay. Well, look here. Uh, look here. Uh, I want to apologize. This has never happened before. But me and the microwave went off at the same time. I want to say I'm sorry. Ding, ding, ding. I did not know I was through. And the food? Ding, ding, ding. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> listen, 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 I apologize. This is the first time this has ever happened. I dreamed I was peeing, okay? All right, I, that's why we both laying here wet. I'm just saying, this is the first time this has ever happened, and I apologize. Wow. <laughs> okay? I was peeing in my dream, okay? <laughs> yeah, when you're 12. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You can have people in there, Pippi. Come on, Steve. Yeah. Baby, baby, baby. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your mama. <laughs> Damn. 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 <laughs> I, I didn't know. I had no idea. I'm supposed to know. I'm supposed yeah. to know. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, up next, more of this crazy ignorant show. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Yahoo is reporting, guys, a new poll uh, that finds 59% of couples say that they um, – suspected their partner of cheating if they suspected them they would discuss the matter with them rather than jumping to conclusions i'm going to say that again for the ladies okay 59 percent of couples say that if they suspected their partner of cheating they would discuss the matter with them rather than jumping to conclusions okay, okay, black okay cool let you me ask you a question uh -huh. shirley and no. carla no mm -hmm. let me ask you a question no. <laughs> just listen to this question okay. <laughs> If you suspected uh -huh. your husband of cheating mm -hmm. and it was not on the internet, mm -hmm. nobody knew, none of your coworkers, it was not, it wasn't made public. If you suspected your husband of cheating, would you bring it up calmly? Would you bring it up with anger? How would you do it? Probably all of the above for me. Uh, without the calm, though. <laughs> you already you know, know where I'm coming. All of coming Vigor. Here. All of that. <laughs> There's no yeah. calm. All of There's the above no. for me without the calm. Anger. <laughs> if I suspected that? No, yeah. No, well, you, I mean, if you had suspicions, you ain't had no proof. Mm -hmm. You ain't you ain't heard nothing. You ain't got no pictures. Ain't no ain't on the internet. It none of that. But Steve, uh -huh. you know we have intuition. You know we have intuition. Is Any that disappointing questions? to you, Mr. Harvey? I don't know. I'm just trying to <laughs> see what y'all would do. I don't really. And mm -hmm. and the word discussion I have a problem with. There will be no discussion. Well, are you going to just find out on your own first? Like, do you know a little CSI? And... Let me ask yeah. you a question. The Suppose you discovered that you were 100% wrong about him oh, then I'm and a... that he wasn't cheating. Mm -hmm. oh, what then... happens at that point? Oh, then I'm apologizing and begging to his forgiveness, begging for his forgiveness and threatening him he better not do it. You see what happens. Yes. Gonna, when I uh, just forgiveness say, and threat at oh, the same yeah. time. That is definitely. That is, you got to put the fear of God in his heart. That's you got to do lie. that. Yeah, you apologize yeah. for your wrongdoing, Absolutely. but you know, well, let me you know make it up to him. You know, that is a lie. all of that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Any more questions? Yeah. Mm -mm. We're That's here for amazing. it. No, y'all's <laughs> answers is short and direct. And yeah, direct. and truthful. <laughs> and and there's no there's no. In between, ain't no, you know. That's I don't uh -huh. like talking to y'all. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's. A if lot. were you expecting something else? I don't know what I expected, <laughs> but that wasn't it. You you've obviously been through this before. <laughs> I tell you what, I found out though. Um, What's that? I'm finding out. I ain't even fired up to have a discussion. Once, <laughs> once they find out I cheated, it's, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Your ugly ass sitting up here got the nerve to cheat. <laughs> No, you Damn, didn't. Don't you? But Junior, don't you know that money changes things? Don't you know that? Yeah, yeah. Ha-ha, you get the nerve. <laughs>
That was before. <laughs> Look at you now. Well, see, Tommy's saying, dang, Junior, like, you can't believe Junior called himself ugly. Tommy, you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not. I'm not gonna let you break. Stop doing that. You go. Listen, uh, you're not gonna do this. I'm not. No, I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna tell the truth. Are you fine, Tommy? I'm you- no, I'm not no fine, and I'm not all. But I ain't just finna be ugly though. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, you're what? not fine, <laughs> and I'm not ugly. But listen to me. If you're not fine, <laughs> then what but is by you? a long shot, <laughs> what you think that is? Why do you do I'm that to him, Steve? You don't know that to him. I don't know why Tommy keep thinking he's cute. But you you're did. not cute. I didn't, I didn't say I was cute. I'm just saying I'm not Tommy, ugly. Tommy, listen to me. Listen to me. You look strange. I'm, I'm, I'm decent. I don't look strange. Shut up, man. You do. I do not look strange. Tommy, uh, wait, look. Tommy listen to me, man. He what? just tries to find Get any yourself. way he can no, stay All him. he got to do is just talk. Get a mirror. And look at yourself from the side. You strange looking. I am not strange. No, Tommy, you are. You look strange, dog. Everybody, all the men in our family, we strange looking from the side. We can have fun with it, Tommy, when you accept it. Tommy doesn't accept that. He's never going to accept that. You guys know that. I'm not. I'm not doing it. All right. All right. Speaking of Tommy. Take us to break with your strange looking. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here's something we can all comment on or or think about. If you could be the best player in any sport, what sport would that be? We all know the NFL is the most popular sport. Football, of course, that's the most popular sport in the land. But the players are mostly unseen because they wear helmets, okay? Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. they get hit a lot. Uh, (laughs) It's not ideal. NBA players have a good gig, uh, but playing basketball still involves a lot of running around, you know, a lot of running. So, guys, if you were the, to be the best player in any sport, what would that be? Steve? Well, it'd be basketball. I'll give a damn what that survey said. <laughs> <laughs> You'd run around. I'm talking about all that damn running around. What you want to do? What sport? <laughs> I won't be no damn baseball player. Get what? out there every now and then. You out there every third inning. I might want to be out there for that. <laughs> what about you, Junior? <laughs> want to be no damn hockey? Them and run my ass up into that wall. We fighting, partner. <laughs> you know, some teeth will be knocked out. Sitting up here and play no dry ass soccer, one to nothing. Been out here 98 minutes running up and down. I ain't even kicked the damn ball. Kick him, man. Just get this ball in this net best way you can. Throw it in there. <laughs> what about you, Junior? <laughs> I'm on basketball. Uh huh. And the ladies that come with it. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. Okay. What? Probably, what about probably you? me, honestly, about, uh. about sumo wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least you naked halfway in. <laughs> Three quarter. All right. All right. Uh, coming up, more fun, more music, more ignorance on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Have you guys ever worked with someone? <laughs> we all work together, yep. so listen to this. Have you ever worked with someone yeah. and found out that he or she <laughs> was making more money than you? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> every day, they make more money than you. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Is that a question, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if so, you know there's no worse feeling. What are we talking about? <laughs> I have no idea why this has come up. You immediately want to rush into your boss's office, huh? He just so happens to be the boss, and ask for a comparable raise. Now, this is according to an article in a women's uh, uh, uh on their website. You should first research why your coworker makes more money mm-hmm. and see if your pay is below market rate. Then go in and negotiate with your boss by pulling together your accomplishments since being on the staff. That is it. Okay, that's how you get a raise, okay, yeah. if you find out someone's making more than okay, you. Okay, that's good advice. Yeah. yeah. Do that, not really say good. you got it. That is not a that's not a good phrase to use when you want a raise. <laughs> oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking to your boss. To the, when you talk to, to your boss. boss. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Got you, Jay, meaning yeah. that. Okay. I wanna, what, what, why do you need a raise? Because you got, <laughs> you it. got it. You got it. No, you're right, Jay. Okay, okay. Don't true. point out stuff they are buying for themselves if you want a raise. <laughs> 
I see you coming here with a new suit every day. How come? <laughs> what I need to know is how come? That's not a good point. Don't don't okay. go there. Look at the car you don't, drive. Look at the car you drive. <laughs> and I'm on the bus. Don't don't go there with that. Um, <laughs> bring out your accomplishments. What do you bring to this company as That's to why right. you want more money? That's, That's okay. right. When okay. I found out how yeah. much more Steve was making than me, <laughs> that upset me. So what did you do oh, about it? Yeah. I didn't did do it. Who am I complaining to? Him? Who am I complaining to? Yeah, did you go ask Steve for a raise? <laughs> so that didn't last long, did it? That didn't last long. <laughs> Tommy. Steve, as yes, CEO, sir, though. I have been at this a lot longer than you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I've been in this business longer than you. <sighs> I've had more failures than you. You so therefore, Tom. You finna talk about Papa Ray? Is that what you finna do? <laughs> <laughs> See, He's talking about John. Going he wasn't going there. I wasn't even there. talking about that right there. He wasn't. <laughs> Papa but Ray since you brought was it up. a fine piece of theater. Right. Right. Since you it's brought it up. Back to the John's day. Back to the raises. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about Papa I, Ray. I <laughs> I just been out here longer than you, dog. But you got yeah. like two or three more zeros than me, though. I mean, it's a it's a extreme amount. <laughs> two or three. <laughs> you got some zeros. Well, you know no, what? I, I look at no, it this no, way. No, no, Tommy. But... Excuse me. Hold on one second. Mm-hmm. No, Tommy. Yes. Uh, you got you're four. Referring to, no, what you're referring to is commas. <laughs> Well, commas, oh, the commas. That's what I mean. That's yeah. what I was the laughing commas at. commas are powerful. You, yeah. the you worry about the zeros. Yeah. 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 Don't worry about them zeros. <laughs> it's them commas. You got to get the commas. It's them damn I, commas, boy. That's, man. that's yeah. where your money is. Your money ain't in them zeros. Your money is in them commas. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here's Steve with his closing remarks. My closing remarks today are uh, rather personal to me. Uh, as I'm sure it is with a lot of you when you hear the subject. But I want to try to encourage people to make this uh, readily available to themselves. I can't even begin to tell you how effective this weapon has been for me throughout my life. How many times I have used this to help me, to comfort me, to soothe me, to guide me, to just make me feel like somebody's listening. I'm talking about the effectiveness of prayer. I want to remind everybody on a personal level of what prayer has meant to me. Now, I'm sure there are millions of people listening to me know exactly what I'm talking about, but sometimes you got to say it out loud as a reminder to yourself and just an offer to other people who might be struggling out there because everybody struggles with something. But every time I've truly struggled with something, prayer has been my most most effective tool. It really is, man. The thing about prayer, the cool thing about prayer is you don't have to ask for nobody's permission. You don't need an appointment. You don't have to clear it with anybody. And I'm sure that, you know, people will share with you certain methods they use, but really any way you do it, be just fine. You don't have to be on your knees. You know, if you want to, that's absolutely fine, but you could be on the public transportation. You could be driving. You could be sitting in your car, you could be in your cubicle, you could be at your desk, you could be at your workstation, you could be walking on the way to lunch. It, you can do it anywhere. So please don't wait until you have an available space or time because the thing about prayer and God, man, he's always available. The cool thing about prayer also, it doesn't require perfection. And what I mean by that is you don't have to have yourself together to do it. This is a big one that people need to understand. Prayer does not require perfection. As a matter of fact, prayer doesn't require that you come to pray after you get it right. Matter of fact, you don't have to get it right. You don't have to be perfect. Prayer is for broken people. Prayer is for people that are confused. Prayer is for people who are unsure about the next move. Prayer is for people who are grieving. Prayer is for people who are hurting. Prayer is for people who feel alone. 
It's for people who got nowhere to go, who have no place to turn. Now, it, it, it would be good if you used it all the time. But let's be honest. A lot of times we wait till something is wrong. It's best to do it all the time. But if you are finding yourself in one of these positions of being broken, confused, unsure, hurting, grieving, alone, then it's available. Because the thing about God is he's merciful. He understands already that you're not perfect. He understands already that you only come to him a lot of times when you really need him. But the incredible thing about him is he's always there. That's incredible. God is behind the prison walls. He's inside of hospitals. God is down at the funeral home. God shows up, man, when he needed most, when he's needed most. And it doesn't matter. Because let me tell you what prayer has done for me. It has given me comfort. It has given me a surefire way to get real answers. Prayer connects us to the greatest source of power available to man. I'm just talking to you real, y'all. I'm just giving it to you the way I see it. There are people who can explain prayer far better than me. I'm pretty sure there's some people in that pulpit can give you a cold, cold definition of prayer. But what if you ain't what if you ain't there that Sunday? I'm just telling you from a hood cat that prayer has worked for me. That it's got through got me through some of my darkest moments. When it seemed like everywhere I turned, they was against me. Prayer got me through it. Oh, I've done some things publicly, man. Lord have mercy, man that I know would have crumbled me if it was not for prayer. Oh, I've had people talking about me that don't even know me, ain't never met me, just saying negative about me. You know what got me through it? Prayer. You know, when they all said I was as ignorant as person on television? Prayer. When I was being called out of my name, what I felt was unjustifiably? Prayer. Prayer. When they lie about me, drag my character and name through the mud with lies, prayer. Prayer. When I was homeless and living in that car, prayer. Prayer changes things. Just use it, man. Stop being proud and use it because prayer works. Pray. Don't ask nobody. Listen, don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. And don't ever be too proud to pray. Because prayer, prayer changes things. You can believe that. Y'all have a great weekend. It's already. Have a great weekend. <laughs>